Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So I still have Ben Fuchs here, skincare chemist, nutritionist, pharmacist, you name it, right? Educator. Educator, Researcher. yes. Researcher, love it all. Yeah. So he's here with me again today. So today we are gonna go over your questions and answers for you guys. So on my Instagram story just a couple days ago, I asked you guys, I told you guys Ben was gonna be here with me. So I said, you know, ask me any and all questions skincare related because you've been in the skincare business for 35 so years. long. Right, so he's so knowledgeable. I mean, when you talk to him, just. He he's just knows everything about the skin and the health of skin. So you guys ask me your questions and you are here to answer them today. Great. So I'm just going to go up because I literally just made a list of all of your questions. So I'm just going to give them to you and you do your thing. Okay. Okay, cool. First question. Somebody wants to know about ingredients for like specific skin concerns, acne, rosacea, okay. like actual skin okay. issues. Well, the most important thing we're going to talk about this later, and this is really important to understand is that the vast majority of the health of the skin is determined from the inside out, not the outside in. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, as we said earlier, the skin's kind of unique in, in, in terms of organs in the body <clears throat> in the sense that you can approach it from the outside in. But the vast majority of the skin, because it is an organ, needs to be addressed from the inside out. Which is how, like, I told you this, you've changed my life yes. with that information because yes. rosacea, I was like, you know, you just try to apply so much. You go to the dermatologist and they give you prescriptions and nothing works. Dermatology, with due respect, and I have a lot of friends who are dermatologists, and mm -hmm. respectfully, and I always yeah. tell, them this, that I tell them this when I talk to them, yeah. is the silliest of all the medical sciences. Why? Because by the time you see the rosacea, by the time you see the eczema, by the time you see the pimple, by the time you see the psoriasis, it's over. That is the resolution phase. That's how the body has resolved an internal it's like on its way out. It's on its way out. The classic example is nail fungus. You know, a fu the, the body will attempt to excrete toxins through the skin when it's overloaded with toxicity. Right. So the nails make a wonderful route of, of excretion, of elimination of toxicity. And you hear people saying, well, oh, you can just cream for your nail fungus and this laser for your nail fungus. No, by the time you see it in the, in the nails, it's on its way out. The same with psoriasis, same with acne. acne. Rosacea. These are all attempts, the body's attempting to eliminate things. And this is why dermatology is such a failed medical science. Nobody gets results from their dermatologist right. except temporary immune suppression, perhaps, right. or a steroid cream. And it's also why the medicines you get from a dermatologist today are the exact same medicine you would get from a dermatologist in 1960 or 1970. Right. It hasn't advanced any because the science is such that there's nothing you could do to a skin to a skin problem once you see it on the outside. Right. The trick well, is to take internal. care of it on the inside. So what you have to do if you have a skin problem is you have to address it at the causal level, which is going to be in the inside. Right. That, and this and this is well, I'm just going to interrupt you for one second, just because this is what was so life changing to me because you know I've been to dermatologists, some of the best dermatologists, like names that. Everyone would know if I said them, but they don't address the internal. And until you address that with me, right. I had nothing. Like my skin has completely have done a 180 since and the but internal. And here's a beautiful thing, okay? Number one, there's two beautiful things about understanding this message. Yeah. Number one is now you really get an effect. You can yeah. really do something because you're approaching it at the causal level. But the second effect, the second wonderful thing about understanding this concept is it liberates you. Mm -hmm. You can handle yeah. your own business. And, and I believe as a pharmacist and as a healthcare professionals, we should all be handling our own health business. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have to go to a dermatologist. Right. We shouldn't have to go to a physician to explain to us what's happening in our body. And so once you understand that your skin problem is the end result of a biochemical process that's starting from the inside and, and proceeding to the outside, right. it gives you power over your own body and you get real effects and it happens quickly right. because it's like... The body is all, all the things that we call diseases and all the things that we cause problems are really responses. Mm -hmm. The body is responding to something. So right. when you have a response that you don't like, you don't change it at the response level. You change it at the cause of the response right. level, which is going to be on the inside. And almost right. always, it's going to be food. Why? Almost always food and almost always digestion, both food slash digestion, because they're both involved. Yep. Not because I'm a foodie, because I'm not a foodie. Not because I'm some kind of, you know, nutritionist, dietitian guy, you gotta eat organic. You can right. only, I'm not that guy. Mm. That's not my job. That's not what I do. The reason digestion and, and food are so important, why I emphasize it, is because that is the place where the outside world meets the inside world. And because the body is always responding to the outside world, this represents your most powerful leverage point for controlling how the body responds. Your acne, your psoriasis, your wrinkles, your rosacea, these are responses. 
The most powerful leverage point for controlling these responses are going to be where the outside world meets the inside world, or where the, the outside world meets the inside world, because that's where the responses are starting from. So the digestion is food like food and digestion. It's huge. Yes. That's where I saw my results right yeah. there. Food and digestion. Just right there. You, you know how you can tell? If you just fast for three days yeah. and you have a rash or you have itchiness, yeah. it'll go away. Right. Gosh, if you have if you have psoriasis or eczema, notice. And eczema and psoriasis are classic examples of, mm -hmm. of uh, food responses. By the way, mm -hmm. all of these things that we're talking about, like rosacea and, and psoriasis and acne and eczema, these are all manifestations of a part of the, a system in the body, a part of the body called the immune system. Right. I've heard the term, right. right? Yeah. So the immune system is your defense system. The immune system lives in two, it lives everywhere in your body, but it has two main headquarters. Actually, it has a headquarters mm -hmm. and it has a a main satellite headquarters. So it has a, a main headquarters, a main department, and it has a satellite department. And then it's spread out and dispersed throughout the body. But the main headquarters of your immune system, where 90 plus right. percent of your immune system is in your digestive right. system. That's Specific, crazy. The no, vast yeah. majority and the satellite yeah. is in the skin. Yeah. So the skin is almost like your digestive system outside in. Or you right. can say the other way around, your, your digestive system is like your skin inside out. They're basically the same systems, except one is on the outside and one is on the inside. And their main role, they have lots of roles, but one of their main roles, I'll say, is defense or immunity. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a, a skin problem, whether it's psoriasis or acne or rosacea or, or eczema, you have an immune problem, you have a defense problem. Right. And because the main headquarters for your defense system or your immune system is the digestive system, that alone tells you that you have a tremendous amount of power over your skin by working with food and working with digestion. So people, so if you have an acne problem, if you have a rosacea problem, you have to go, you look at your inside, well, go get, get, I guess, food intolerance, well, all of don't that. Don't worry about testing. Uh -huh. right. Food testing, allergy testing, don't waste your money, don't waste your time. You just have to do it yourself. You be the test. Right. You know, so eliminate and kind of you, play well, around. There's two ways you can do it. There's a few ways you can do it. Uh -huh. Ideally, what you want to do is a food diary. Mm -hmm. Or actually, ideally, what you want to do is stop eating for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Hit the reset button. You know, yeah. we take, you take a vacation, right? You take mm -hmm. vacations every year or a few months, whatever you take a vacation. Everybody right. takes vacations. When was the last time your digestive system had a vacation? Right. You know, most of us, we've never given our digestive system a vacation. We've gone our entire life without our digestive system getting more than four hours of a break. Yeah. So just giving your digestive system a food holiday can be powerful. And from an anti-aging perspective, it's one of the most powerful longevity strategies you could ever employ. Really? Is calorie restriction and intermittent right. fasting. Mm -hmm. So first thing... I call it hitting the reset button. If you have a skin, care, skin problem or really any problem, any health problem, hit the reset button. Mm -hmm. That means fast for a couple of days. Give your digestive system a break. And what you'll notice when you start eating again is all of a sudden you'll have your favorite food and you'll be going, whoa, I don't feel so good. Mm -hmm. Because things go under the radar when they happen over and over and over again. Exactly. You don't even you notice don't even it. Think, that's what's happening to me. You right. Think about it. Yeah. But if you fast for a couple of days and then you start eating your food. And then you feel healthier and then all of a sudden you start noticing. You all notice yes, it Yeah, that's clearly. exactly what happened to me. So, exactly. So I like people to hit the reset button. Yeah. But even if you don't want to hit the reset button, at least take notes. Mm -hmm. So be like a detective. You know, when if a crime happens and a detective comes, he, he interviews you. He's taking notes. Mm -hmm. Doctors and nurses, we're always taking notes. People are in the health business, we're always taking notes. Become like a detective for your body. Become your own healthcare professional. Take notes. Right. Eat a food. See how you feel. So should we all, basically, should we all have healthy skin? But if we have a skin condition, that just means something internally is going you wrong, right? You got it. So we, we should all have... Always. Right. And you know what? This is another thing. You should all, nobody should have sensitive skin. You, you right. You have sensitive skin? Right. Skin's not supposed to be sensitive, ever. Mm -hmm. Skin is designed to be resistant and resilient yep. and, and bounce the environment off. So if you have sensitive skin, if you have broken out skin, rashy skin, irritated skin, in a way, mm -hmm. your broken out skin and your rashy skin and your sensitive skin are your best friends. Because it's letting you know. It's letting exactly. you know. It's yeah. telling you there's something going on inside your body yeah. that if you can correct now, it's going to save you from having a heart attack later. Right. It's going to save you, God forbid, from having cancer later. You know, you have a, a, a system in your, in your body that's so underappreciated called your lymphatic system. Right? I'm mm -hmm. sure you heard the term right. lymph, right? Yep. The lymph is your sewage control system, or your, uh, your sewage system. It dumps, it dumps toxins outside of your body. If your lymph is congested, it's going to show up on your skin as welts and boils and cysts and acne. Yeah. It, uh, those bumps on, on the arms that we were talking about yesterday, right. that's a lymphatic condition. Right. If you can figure out why is your lymph toxic and you can clean out your lymph, not only are you going to improve the bumps and the boils and the cysts and the psoriasis, and the acne, but you're going to save yourself from getting cancer later on because right. your body like, is, is cleaner. So much, right. Exactly. Because the lymphatic yeah. system is involved in the formation of breast cancer. Right. So 
if you could, your acne, you may not like your acne, and it may be cosmetically unappealing, but it's telling you that you're on the road to breast cancer, mm -hmm. or God forbid, you're on the road to autoimmunity, or you're on the road to other health health uh, crises. So right. your acne is unpleasant as it might be it's, cosmetically. It's, it's actually, it should be. It's, it's saving you. It's, it's telling you something yes, wrong. Yes, it's telling you that something's right. wrong, and you don't want to be. Sick. Now, now I've heard just going on to this topic a little bit more because I find it so. Because, it, like I said, it's truly changed my whole perspective in my life. Um, but I've heard people say like, oh, you know, I've taken out this food. I've tried this. I went vegan. I took or dairy I, out. I, follow, and I, still I only feel... eat good. I hear this all the time. I only eat good. Yeah. I eat really good. And I, I still have vegetable. acne. Right. How do we know we're eating good? Mm -hmm. Because we heard it on the internet that, that, that you eat that food good. That, that's a good food to eat. Or, or our, our mother told us or, or the doctor told us. That's not the way you determine whether a food is good. Mm -hmm. You determine whether a, the way the way you determine whether a food is good or not is how do you feel? How does your yeah. skin look? Right. What are your digestive and, and I guess for everybody, it's going to be a little it's going different. To be like different. I said, for me, I took out gluten, I took out dairy, and my skin completely It's going to be different for everybody. Now, most people will have a problem with dairy. Most people right. will have a problem with gluten. But there's many things that you can right. react to. You can react to broccoli. Right. You can react to tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear people say I only eat organic. It has nothing to do with organic. It's, it's the food. And people it's, say I'm a vegetarian. Beans are one of the most comedogenic or, or one of the most skin-destroying foods you, for some people that they can right. eat. And that's vegetarian. Right. That's vegan. So you yep. can't go by vegetarian, by vegan, by organic. Organic by what you read on the internet. Because your skin, your body can have a, a response exactly. to anything. Exactly. Right. That's why taking notes is so important. Right. Do a food. I call it a food diary where you write down everything you and eat. I, and I love that idea because you're getting so in touch with your body. You're getting in and touch you, with and, your and body. And you honestly, because since I started doing that, I see everything. I, I see okay. everything I feel. I feel, you know. Brianna, you added years to your life. Yeah, like it's insane. You Not only do you add years to your life, you re reduce your risks of heart disease, of mm -hmm. cancer, of autoimmunity, of horrible things, horrible ways that the body can break down when you're, you know, you're young yeah. now, but when you're 50 and when you're 60 right. or 70, it's all going to add up. Right. So, You've not only added years to your life, but you've reduced your risk of horrible things that could happen right. and that do happen to people right. as so they, they don't age. they're not listening to their body. And I never body. did until speaking with you, which is why I'm so passionate That's about awesome. this. Like I love awesome. it. Don't yeah. you want to like scream it to like, everybody? You really do. Like <laughs> yeah. I like I tell them all the time. I'm like, it's just like you I want know. to really be in tune. And, and as you know, I can hear in your voice how, how passionate you are mm -hmm. about it. And because you've experienced this personally. Yeah. I've seen this. Not hundreds, With so thousands many of times, right. exactly, and that's why you are not going to ever shut me up. Right, I, I do my radio show, exactly. my presentations, and videos, and, and go around the country really talking because everybody has to hear this because yep. the mainstream isn't telling us this. Right, and and you can go into the conspiracies and the insidious nature of it, and and how the drug companies run things and the profit margins that are associated with it. But mm -hmm. you know what? It, that's all the negative stuff. Mm -hmm. The positive stuff is we have control over yep. our bodies. If we yep. just do a few things, listen to our bodies, give our uh, put things in our bodies that our bodies recognize, stay away from, from toxicity, exercise a little bit, yep. leverage our mental natures and our spiritual natures and our emotional natures because those all play right. a role in the health right. of the skin and the health of we the body. We were talking about that last night with stress and all, all of that. that all plays a role. It absolutely yeah. does. So you know, when I talk about health and wellness, I always say health and wellness and beauty mm -hmm. and, and the skin. Uh, and, and the condition of the skin are multidimensional, or they're based in multi in, in four different dimensions: spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. And they're all important. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just do the physical. You can't right. just do the mental and just the right. emotional. You can't just be spiritual. And by spiritual, I don't mean religious necessarily. I mean some just, kind of connection to higher power, right. or whatever that is. You want to be multidimensional. You want right. to somehow have some kind of connection to the overall intelligence, God, or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. It's in the universe that runs everything to uh, your mental nature because every time you think a thought, it gets converted into a hormone for better or worse. Right. A hormone of life and of beauty and of health or right. a hormone of death and disease and destruction. Likewise with your feelings and then work physically. Exercise, rest, make sure you're nutriating, staying away from problem foods, avoiding sugar. Sugar is a, is a mortal enemy of connective tissue yes. and of the skin. Right, exactly. So, likewise with cigarette smoking. You know, there's a lot of things that we interact with on a regular basis and we don't realize they have a relationship to how our skin shows up. Right, exactly. And our health and they have a major relationship. So, right. These are little things that we can all do. They don't require a doctor's office visit. They don't require interfacing with drugs Just or with a medical listen to your mom. body. Yes, and, like and I love that. I think it's so important. This person saying, "Why doesn't her melasma goes away?" She has tried everything out there. She's tried First the hydroquinone. Never, never everything. say I've tried everything uh -huh. because that limits you. That okay. closes. If you ever, and I hear this all the time. I've yep. tried everything. Never yep. say I've tried everything. Yep. Say I haven't tried the right thing yet, or I've tried a lot of things. So that's first of all. Second of all, melasma is caused by two main main factors. Number one, the stress hormone hormone cortisol, and number two, the pseudo stress hormone estrogen. 
Okay. And this is why women will get dark spots when they get older. This is why they'll get dark pregnancy spots when they're on pregnancy. And, right. They'll get dark spots when they're on the birth control pill or when they're hormone replacement therapy. Also, the stress hormone, uh, cortisol, will also uh, cause pigmentation. So you can get rid of pigments, uh, pigmentation topically with retinols, which is the best, and yep. also vitamin C, but it'll come back. Yep. So you've got to work on your estrogen. You've got to work on your cortisol. And the estrogen's a little bit tricky, so let's talk about that next, a okay. second. Stress hormone, cortisol is stress hormone. Right. You've got to reduce stress hormone. There's two ways you do it. Internally, you reduce stress hormone by staying away from uh, uh, st stressful kinds of foods. Sugar is a stressful food. Digestive issues like IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and ulcerative sort of colitis, those will spike your cortisol. So you've got oh, to make sure okay. you're working on your digestive system. Right. And then calming the body down mentally and emotionally will also reduce your cortisol. Cortisol is a very, very interesting hormone. Mm -hmm. We need some cortisol, but too much cortisol will cause all kinds of problems. Oily skin is one of the things, one of the things that can happen if you have okay. too much cortisol. Melasma is another thing that can happen if you have too much cortisol. If you're trying to fall asleep at night, if you're tired but you're jittery, yeah. you're not feeling where you can't fall asleep but you're tired. Yeah. So that's a sign that, you're, that your body's producing too much cortisol. If you... Uh, uh, if you uh, ever do you ever experience this when you're working out, you're lifting weights or something, and then you stand up and you get all dizzy or yeah, weak, yeah, that's exactly. a sign that you're hyper cortisol. Really? If you get out of bed quickly and you feel dizzy, is it? That's too much cortisol. Oh, that happens to me sometimes. Yes. Oh if my you're god. Coffee drinker, that will yeah. happen because coffee duplicates cortisol. You know what? Yeah. One of the most the sneakiest and, and evil. Um, uh, manifestations of too much cortisol mm. is weight that won't come off of you. Mm. If you're Isn't that like around the stomach area? If you're like trying to lose weight and you can't lose weight or if you have a lot of weight to lose and you'll lose maybe 50 pounds because you, you know, you're 100 pounds overweight and you lose 50 but you can't lose the second 50, rest assured your cortisol is too high. And if you're producing, if you have dark spots, that's that's that's, uh, a cortisol, that's cortisol. That's there's, interesting. There's, in addition to uh, correcting digestive problems, staying away from sugar, relaxing, breathing, meditating. We need to talk about meditating. That's super yeah. important for yeah. lowering cortisol levels. There's nutrients that will help reduce cortisol. Vitamin A can help balance out cortisol. Vitamin D can help out balance out cortisol. Um, there's something called uh, pregnenolone, which is a wonderful hormone-like supplement that you could buy at the okay. health food store. Right, it will balance out cortisol. Um, there's a uh, progesterone cream will balance out cortisol. Melatonin can help balance out cortisol. So okay. there's a lot of strategies you can use to balance but that, out cortisol. The root of it is a cortisol problem. Exactly. Okay. Even the name melatonin tells mm -hmm. you that it will control melanin. Right. That it will control pigment and largely because it antagonizes right. cortisol. Mm -hmm. Then, um, then there's the hormone estrogen. Now estrogen is a really fascinating substance and we could do a whole video on estrogen. So I can't really talk, you know, right. I, 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 there's a lot to say about estrogen. Right. Estrogen is an interesting hormone because estrogen gets broken down into various components. It's extremely toxic stuff as it gets broken down. It's responsible for breast cancer. It's responsible for autoimmune diseases. It's interesting because most, most uh, patients who have autoimmunity, most patients who have hypothyroidism, most patients who have Alzheimer's disease are women mm -hmm. because of estrogen. Ah. And it's not just estrogen, but it's the it's the breakdown products. They're called the metabolites of estrogen. Mm -hmm. Estrogen is broken down in the digestive system. So if you have a digestive problem, a liver problem, a gallbladder problem, an intestinal problem, even a, a stomach problem, mm -hmm. you're not going to break down your estrogen correctly and that can cause all kinds of oh, havoc, wow. including uh, anxiety and depression and jitteriness and, and a loss of libido and loss of fertility. It's a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome and melasma and acne. There's all kinds of problems that can wow. be associated with disruptions and how estrogen is broken down. Wow, so in oh my gosh, I didn't know all that. Yeah, yeah. I know. So that's what yeah. I say. This is a whole video right. in and of itself. So in addition to your cortisol strategies for melasma, or your anti-cortisol strategies for melasma, you also want to work on helping your body process and clear estrogen. Mm -hmm. Now, like we were talking earlier, when you do all of these things, not only is your melasma going to disappear, but you're going to reduce your risk of breast cancer. Right. You're going to reduce your risk of, of uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, all of which are epidemic. You're going to reduce your risk of colon cancer, which is also related to estrogen. You're going to reduce your risk right. of autoimmune diseases. Right. All so again, it's all showing up in your skin. It's showing up on reason. your skin. Your melasma right. is the manifestation of the biochemistry that is, is destroyed disrupted that mm -hmm. if you don't correct can lead to horrible things down the road. Right. So for melasma, you want to work on number one, cortisol. You want to work on number two, estrogen. How do you work on cortisol? Well, we went through some of those, uh, some of those uh, strategies. How do you work on estrogen? Use progesterone cream, number one. You could use pregnenolone, which helps balance out estrogen. 
work on the digestive system. We didn't talk so about it's probiotics. All, again, all digestion. Digestion is Probiotics critical. changed my life. Critical. Yes. Yeah. Unbelievably critical for a lot of reasons, but they help you process estrogen. Okay. If you've had your gallbladder removed, you're at major risk for estrogen problems mm-hmm. because estrogen is cleared out in bile and without a gallbladder, you don't have as much bile. So if you have any kind of digestive health issues and you have melasma, that is a red flag for working on your digestive system, right. probiotics and foods, etc. Right. All the supplements that help balance out cortisol, vitamin A, a, vitamin D, even vitamin E to a certain extent, all will have an effect on helping you balance out your estrogen as well. And if you try to make a baby, a lot of times people are, you know, want to make a baby and they can't make a baby. That's a classic sign that your estrogen is off. So all of these strategies will also make you more fertile. Right. This message that we're talking about, whether it's we're talking about using vitamin A for your skin or vitamin C for your skin or using nutritional strategies or dietary right. strategies, it puts the locus of control for health back where it belongs. Right back in our labs, back in, back with us. And that's really what this is about. Right. Everything we're talking about here is a message of empowerment. Mm-hmm. It's a message that says we have the power to be healthy. It's a God-given nature. It's the in the body's God-given nature to be healthy, right. to be healed. And it healed. can heal itself. It can and heal and itself. Right. People remit from stage four breast cancer. I have a friend who had literally stage four breast cancer. She's been cleared for 20 years. If one person can do it, anybody mm-hmm. can do it. Exactly. Autoimmune diseases can reverse. Diabetes can reverse. Skin can be restored back to normal, beautiful health. As you are living right. testimony to, you can, you will, if you keep right. doing what you're doing again, mm-hmm. what you're doing now, you will never have rosacea again. Right. You have now cured. I don't like the word right. cure. But it's, that's exactly what it is. Yourself of rosacea. Right. No doctor. You did right. it from the comfort of your own kitchen. Yes. Exactly. And, and just by matters. listening to your body and just, oh my gosh, like it's so powerful. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. Okay. Top five harmful ingredients for the skin. What would you say? Specific ingredients or classes of ingredients? Um, I could tell you sunscreens, but there's lots of different sunscreens. The chemical, the chemical sunscreen, right? Yeah. So let's just talk classes of of ingredients. There's there's probably 20 different chemical sunscreens that are all bad for you. Right. So so that would take care of five right there. Mm -hmm. But let's just say sunscreens in general. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sunscreens in general, preservatives, surfactants, and that's like things that have a detergent yeah, like effect sodium laurel like sulfate, sodium yeah. sulfate um, that are uh, perfumes and fragrances. Fragrance in skincare, right? Awful. Mm-hmm. Awful. The alcohol in skincare. Alcohol is not good for your skin, but it's not in the same toxicity category. Really? Uh, yeah. Because okay. no, parabens go into the blood and uh, um, fragrances are highly carcinogenic. Mm-hmm. Never, I, I, I mean, this is kind of, sh- kind of weird to say, but you should never go into those stores like. Uh, I forgot what they're called, Victoria's, where they have the smells. Oh, have, yeah, yeah. There's, there's some chain malls yeah. that never go into those stores. Right. That is like a petri dish of cancer. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, that's just like a, all that fragrance. All those fragrances and all those, those right. are highly toxic. So you want to stay away from those. Right. And then. Uh, so you don't want fragrance in your no, skincare. I know that's what I, I stay away from I as well. You definitely don't want fragrances in a product, especially products that force you to use. Well, there's a lot of fragrance in makeup, which is why I always am like, exactly. You're, you don't want those things. Perfumes, even perfumes. You know, I know everybody loves perfumes, but they're highly, highly cellular toxic substances. Right. It's a good thing they're volatile, but the very volatility implies a certain amount of toxicity when things have that kind of volatility mm-hmm. in them and they have a certain chemical nature that allows them to be sticky. Perfumes are very sticky. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the reasons they're so toxic Yeah, from a, from a molecular standpoint, they're sticky. So perfumes, sunscreens, preservatives, uh, surfactants, and then uh, let me think of what else. And those are the only, those, those are the four are the main... classes that come to mind. I'm sure there's probably something else I'm missing. Right. Um, now, oh, we... hormones. Oh, okay. Hormones. Okay. Oh, things that, or xeno hormones. You know what I mean by xeno hormones? No. Foreign hormones. Mm-hmm. Things that act like hormones, mm-hmm. but okay. aren't really hormones. They're hormone disruptors. Right. Uh, they're, uh, uh, they're, uh, uh Estrogen, specifically so estrogen like disruptor, soy, anything uh-huh. with soy in it okay. has, has the potential to be an estrogen disruptor. Anything mm-hmm. that has legume type material, peas, peas are really big in skincare now, by the way, uh, pea protein, for example. So mm-hmm. peas, legumes, beans, these can have uh, gender bender effects. Mm-hmm. Certainly they're not, I'm not going to put them in the same category as preservatives or as sunscreens right. or as, uh, or as um, uh, uh, fragrances or surfactants even, but they, that would be a fifth thing that I would say away from uh-huh. these foreign estrogens, especially soy derivatives. Any skincare supplements that we should all be taking to help our skin? What supplements? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> it's all supplements. Right. It's all so Fats are the most important. Okay. And this is interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, fats help your skin trap in moisture. And that's really the, the kind of misguided way that moisturizers kind of became invented. They figured we'd trap the moisture and mm-hmm. we put, moisture, we'd put a fat on the surface and we'd trap the moisture. Well, 
that could work conceivably, that could work, but the problem is the skin is supposed to be excreting things too. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be sensing the environment. It's supposed to be absorbing oxygen. And when you trap moisture in, that's not necessarily how you want to keep the, how you want to soften or moisturize the skin because you're going to be disrupting all these other things. Mm -hmm. However, if you ingest fats, you can trap the moisture inside the skin. Right. And when we have dry skin, it's not so much the surface that is dry, it's the moisture underneath right. that's dry. And yes, so again, I mean, that's more of a nutritional thing. It's a thing nutritional well. thing. Right. Yes, yes, yes. The moisture that we're looking for that gives our skin a certain plumpness mm -hmm. is not necessarily a function of the water we drink. Mm -hmm. It's a function of how much water is trapped. Right. It's a bound sort of water. There's a very interesting, some very interesting chemistry that occurs when water meets connective tissue. Connective tissue has an ability to trap water, and that's what makes the skin plump and soft and beautiful, and that's what yeah. makes the skin healthy, healthy enough so that it stays non-dry. Right. All that is a function of fats, of connective tissue building, and of a healthy, a healthy strong stratum corneum barrier. So between a healthy strong stratum corneum barrier, internal fats, and building connective tissue, that's how you keep your skin. Uh, yeah. Keep your skin moist. So how do you do all three of those things? Well, you build a healthy stratum corneum with topical retinol, with topical vitamin C, and with alpha hydroxy acids. Mm -hmm. Those are three wonderful ways to build a healthy, strong stratum corneum, and okay. you're doing that on a regular basis. Right. You build the connective tissue by using nutrition, especially eating connective tissue. Eating uh, bone soup, chicken soup with the bones, cartilage supplements, hyaluronic acid supplements, aloe vera, uh, algae. These are all yep. foods and nutritional supplements that help you build connective tissue. Vitamin C is also very important for right. building connective tissue. And then making sure that you're uh, using um, uh, micronutrients, trace nutrients uh, that support the fatty structure of the body. Vitamin A, critical. Vitamin A deficiency is a classic way to cause dry skin. In fact, vitamin A deficiency, the iconic example of vitamin A deficiency is Accutane. Oh, yeah, right? right. Have you ever seen somebody on Accutane? Yes, their skin is like sucked dry. Sucked dry, right? Why? Because it poisons the vitamin A system. Mm -hmm. This is the, the medical logic right. to stopping acne. We'll just stop all sebum production. Right. We'll stop all the production of oils, and then you can't have acne. Right. Well, of course, but then you can't have any oil any, anywhere. Like your eyes get dry, everything. Exactly. Right. So Accutane mimics vitamin A deficiency. Mm -hmm. That's why it causes its side effects. Okay. So if you want to know what a vitamin A deficiency is, look at somebody who has Accutane, yep. who's on Accutane. Now... You may not have a big time vitamin A deficiency like an Accutane mm -hmm. person would have, but and uh, you may have a mild subclinical. If you have dry skin, right? Like dry skin, right? So vitamin A is a classic example of a vitamin that can help you with dry, or whose deficiency can right. cause dry skin, or that can help you with dry skin. And vitamin A deficiency is very common. Essential fatty acids, omega three and omega six fatty acids, especially omega six fatty acids, mm -hmm. are very important for dry skin. Right. Some people say, "Oh, we get too." I don't know if you heard this. We get too many omega sixes, and we get no. I've never you ever heard this? No. There's this myth out there, and that we get too much omega sixes, so you shouldn't supplement with omega sixes. Ah. Not true. Yeah. Your skin has doesn't really have omega threes. It has omega sixes mm -hmm. in it. So making sure you're using barrage oil, eating primrose oil, wheat germ oil. Um, uh, uh, GMO-free flax, uh, sunflower oil or safflower oil. These aren't great oils, but they're omega-6 rich oils. Right. But a good omega-6 and omega-3 supplement is a good so idea. So that's a good idea, right. But here's where it gets really complicated. Fats are a little tricky for the body to absorb. Right. Water's not tricky for the body to absorb. Right. Water goes right into the system. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of if you have peanut butter and jelly, right? If you, if you pat peanut butter and jelly on a knife... The jelly washes right off. Mm -hmm. Peanut butter, not so much. Right. Peanut butter sticks to the knife. You got to use soap. You got to scrub it off, and you know it's sticky. Well, the same thing happens when you eat a fat. When you eat a fat, it kind of sticks to the food. It doesn't come out of the food very well. So if you right. eat fish, which has vitamin A in it mm -hmm. and has omega three fats in it, but you don't have the ability to digest and to process the omega threes out of the or the vitamin A out of the fish, you're not going to yeah. get the benefit of it. Right. As we get older, we don't digest our fats as effectively, oh. and this is especially problematic with women. Because there's a relationship to estrogen and fat metabolism. And as women get older, they don't make as much estrogen. Their fat metabolism gets thrown off. Right. And this is why women are much more susceptible to skin problems as they get older than men. Oh, really? Thinning oh. skin is an example of fat right. deficiency problems. Dry skin is a pro an example of fat deficiency problems. Or I shouldn't, uh. say, I shouldn't say fat deficiency, but fat malabsorption and fat deficiency problems. Right. Women who are older are more prone to having gallstones and gallbladder problems. Another classic example of fat deficiency problems or fat malabsorption problems. So oh, another thing, pigments and colors, reds and blues and greens and yellows, mm -hmm. they're fatty. Mm -hmm. And so when you eat broccoli and celery and 
and, and squash and tomatoes, what's supposed to happen if you're healthy is those pigments will get digested by bile and by lecithin and by digest pancreatic enzymes and stomach enzymes. They'll be broken down and the pigments will go through your intestine, go into your blood, and then they get stored in your skin. Mm -hmm. And so pigments, the reds and the blues and the greens and the yellows, they're sun protective. They right. protect us from the sun, but because they're fatty, if you're not absorbing your fats as effectively, you're not going to absorb your pigments as effectively, they're not going to get right. stored in the skin as effectively, you're going to be more prone towards sun damage. Uh, so this is one right. of the problems right. women have when they get older, they're more susceptible to sun damage. Right. This is following or secondary to fat malabsorption of essential fatty acids, of vitamin A, of also minerals, and of pigments. So what I tell people is, as you get older, it becomes really important to use your fatty supplements or your foods that contain fats with digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. So to supplement with a digestive enzyme. To supplement with enzyme. a digestive enzyme right. that will help you leverage or access, remove those fats or extract those fatty materials. So you're getting the more nutrients. So they'll come into your blood more yeah. effectively. And also to braise your vegetables a little bit, to, to steam your vegetables or to just heat them a little bit so you release the pigments mm -hmm. and heat your vegetables with butter or with coconut oil, which is a wonderful fat, by the way. Mm -hmm. So you put a little coconut oil and butter, put uh, your broccoli and your tomatoes and your onions and whatever veggies you're using and braise them a little bit before you eat them. And your body, your uh, body will have, uh, it'll be easier for your body to access those pigments right. so they can get stored in your skin. Okay. Also juices mm -hmm. are great. Veggie juices are amazing yep. skin friendly food. Right. One of the most important skin friendly foods you could ever use. They're great if you have digestive system problems. I drink them every day. <laughs> They're great. You make your own? I do. I do a lot you of have them. A yeah. I do. Yes. Yeah. Get a Vitamix. Yeah. A Vitamix is one of the all-time great health tools. Yeah. Yep. If we really cared about health in this country, we'd have national Vitamix insurance, mm -hmm. where every American should have that. Gets a Vitamix yeah. built into the home. I love like green juices. Green and, juices. Oh, so good. All kinds of colors. You can make soups with your yeah. Vitamix. Delicious soup. Soups are another way to take advantage of of, uh, of nutrients that are in foods because they're they're essentially pre-digested. Mm -hmm. So if you have right. a digestive problem, intestinal problem, oh, gallbladder right. problem, yep. pre-digesting your food by making a soup is an ah, amazing strategy. Pre-digesting your food right. by making a, a smoothie or making a veggie juice is another another good idea. Anybody with intestinal problems should be doing lots of soups, right. lots of veggies, okay. lots of smoothies, right. lots of uh, nutritional powder drinks where you put nutritional powder in right. water and drink them. Mm -hmm. So any, anything you could do to help your body leverage or take advantage of uh, uh, of nutrients that are in foods without having to do a lot of work is going to yep. be in your interest. I know because you had recommended to me the, the digestive enzyme supplements. Right. And enzymes are very, enzymes really are important. a whole other thing. They're, they're mm -hmm. extremely important digestive right. enzymes for the skin, for, right. for skin health. Okay, here. So here's one that I actually, I talked about in one of my previous videos. I was telling people how I take my makeup off with coconut oil. Love coconut oil. And, and I got a lot of questions like, oh, isn't, you know, doesn't that cause acne or breakouts? So it's another, again, it's a misunderstanding of acne. Acne is from the inside out. It's right. the body trying to eliminate something. Coconut oil is not going to cause acne. Coconut oil not just has oil, it doesn't just have oil in it, it also has vitamin E in it, mm -hmm. which is incredibly important or helpful for the skin as a protectant. Vitamin E is your protecting vitamin, it protects you right. from the sun, it protects you from the environment, and you'll get vitamin E, excuse me, in coconut oil. And coconut oil contains something called lauric acid, which is actually a precursor to sodium lauryl sulfate. Mm -hmm. So lauric acid and the, and, and the uh, fatty acids that are found in coconut are actually manipulated by the skincare business to form many of our skincare ingredients. Mm -hmm. So coconut oil is the classic example of a nutritional sub of a uh, natural substance of a plant substance that is incredibly skin valuable. Isn't, skin it, isn't it um, antibacterial? Has too? some it's anti like, has the like, lauric acid, right. the fatty acid in there has antibacterial properties right. that are now preserved that are made with lauric acid to take advantage of the fact that they have preservative or antimicrobial properties. Now what about, because um, if you go online it says coconut oil is comedogenic, so what? That is, no. that's a, add that to the, to the mythology. To the yes, because comedogenic is implying that you can somehow change the chemistry of your skin, mm -hmm. the inflammatory chemistry of your skin or inflammatory chemistry of your skin topically. Now to a certain extent you can, but it's not going to cause acne, what it will uh -huh. cause is some kind of rash or cause some kind of irritation. Right. And, and I, I mean the way I look at it is, I mean maybe coconut, I've been using coconut oil, I've never had a problem with my skin, but if some people get, you know, a little breakout from, maybe it's just, the only like, thing, everyone's skin's different. Everyone's so. skin's going to be different and, and I would much, I would attribute uh, breakouts on the skin to two things. Number one, an allergic reaction, which mm -hmm. can happen, but there's right. nothing really in coconut oil that will cause an allergic reaction. Right. And number two is something that you're putting in from the inside. Mm -hmm. As far as comedogenicity goes, you would have to do some major occlusion, mm -hmm. and that, like with, 
I don't even know how you could do it, like maybe with like some kind of cement, like that cast on your face or something like that. Yeah. Or some heavy, heavy petro to petroleum like really, like, to really drive, to like suffocate your skin to that yeah. extent. That's not going to happen with most when skin you ingredients. you just wash it off. Right. right. It's not right. going to happen with coconut oil. Right. Well, I think coconut oil makes your skin feel amazing. It, I, it actually... It's you can eat it, yeah. so you're getting a nutritional, food, you're getting a food exactly. substance on your skin. Right. So I, I, I don't have a problem cooking it well. Okay. Oh, this is a good question because I know my answer to this one, so I want to hear what you say. This, this person asks, your must-have skincare ingredients at every decade of life, so your 30s, your 40s, it's all the same. Like, I get asked this all the time. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. this is a, it's, it's the all same, same skin cells. It's the same skin cells. And at every age, you're And at every age, it's still skin cells. Yeah. And at every age, you need the same thing. You, you need to drive the production of connective tissue, so you need to be at the level of the fibroblast. Mm -hmm. And you need your keratinocytes, your skin cells, to, to, to be dividing at just the right rate. Right. And that's it. Because people always ask me, like, oh, the skincare you're using, I'm only 20, can I use yes. it? You know, I'm 50, yeah, can yes. I use it? If you want, you yes. want it to be used. And it turns out that skin, the body is so magnificent from the age of zero to 20 about, mm -hmm. or zero to 18, that we can smoke and we can drink and we can go out and party and then we go to work the next mm -hmm. day and we seem like we're invulnerable, right? right? And then, I call it the wall, <laughs> right around 28, we hit it, right? Yeah. And we're like, wait a minute, you know, I can't yeah. drink and smoke and go to work the next day yeah. and, you know, <laughs> I can't go out every night anymore and you start to notice things on your skin because yeah. the toll of our bad living, and it's not just our bad living personally, but it's our bad living as a culture because, mm -hmm. you know, we all drink in polluted water and we're all breathing polluted air and we're all living in a toxic environment, psychological environment. So the, the uh, bumps and bruises, the slings and arrows mm -hmm. of, of life hit us and they start to accumulate. And so by the time you're 28 or 29 or 30, that's when you really start you to start notice. notice right. So from right around 25 or even in your early 20s, that's the time to start a good skincare program. Yeah. And it should be the, the same exact skincare program you as start you do it and then continue. All of the chemistry of your skin is exact. All, it's all the same so when you're 60. 20s, when you're like, yeah, it's all you start a program when you're 20s. That's, that's, that's what I would say. That's yes. what I, good skincare started early because yes. it makes a huge difference. Um, large pore issues. I hear this all the time from women as they get Let's older. Pores. Large pores. Let's talk about pores. Okay, yeah. Great. So pores, there's no, the pores you're born with are the pores you always have. Right. They're, they don't change with life. However, as you secrete more oils, your pores will become, it'll, it'll appear to be more, appear to be larger. Right. They'll appear more prominent. Right. As you secrete more oils. That's step number, first, first point. We'll talk about that in a second. The second point is, is as dead cells accumulate on the surface of the skin, pore size seems to be look more uh, pro uh, right. prominent. Your right. pores seem to be more prominent. Yeah. So by exfoliating, and salicylic acid is especially good at this, or even alpha hydroxy acids, uh, exfoliating, you can uh, reduce the appearance of pores. Right. Pore size is, is mandated genetically. Right. You're it doesn't born, change. Doesn't it doesn't change. open and close. Correct. Or, it doesn't exactly. open and close, but, or it, it does open and close, but it doesn't get larger. Right. They don't get larger past a certain size. Yep. Um, uh, using an exfoliating technique is a strategy number one because that can reduce the appearance. The second, you're getting the dirt, you're getting the debris, you're getting you, the well, oil. Well, think about out, it this right? way. If this is a pore, and then you have cells on top of the pore. Yep. The pore looks to be deeper. Right. If there's a bunch of stuff right. on the surface. And then when you slough all that stuff off, the pore will appear to be More have flat. flatter. It'll yep. look, it won't be as prominent or as dramatic. Mm -hmm. The second thing is the oil, and that's really the big problem, is oily skin. Mm -hmm. Large pores are often a function of the secre excess secretion of oil. Oily skin is a classic sign of a defensive response. Right. It's a way the body is protecting itself. It's kind of like Ghostbusters. You remember... Uh, do you remember the movie Ghosts? Yeah, remember, yeah. Remember, what did they use yeah. to get rid of the ghosts? I don't remember. They slimed them. Okay, yeah. They slimed yeah. them, right? So the body uses slime to get rid of bacteria. That's yeah. why you get mucusy when you have a cold, oh, right, right? Because right. your body is using slime to slime so the bacteria. So it's the same with sebum production? Sebum production is exactly the same. It's okay. a manifestation of a defensive response. Mm -hmm. And so when your defensive hormones, i.e. cortisol, and, and also to a certain extent adrenaline, go up, you will start to secrete more oil. Now, not really? so much adrenaline because that's short term, but cortisol right. is long term. So oily skin is a classic sign of cortisol secondary to the body defending itself from really? something. Most importantly, so again, you shouldn't. Everyone should have balanced skin. You shouldn't have never have oily, oily skin. Oily skin. Never have oily skin. Oily That's skin so is excessive cortisol secretion, okay. and excessive cortisol secretion can be caused by insulin and sugar. Mm -hmm. It can be caused by digestive problems. It can be caused by psychological problems. It can cause, be caused by inflammatory issues. It can be caused by anything that affects the adrenal glands. Right. So for oily skin. And for excessive sebum production, if you have large pores and you want to control your sebum production, or you just want to control your skin oils, work with your adrenal glands. 
Right. Your adrenal glands are your body stress glands. Learn to stabilize cortisol for one thing. We talked about all those cortisol yep. strategies. Those are all really adrenal strategies. And then use adrenal nutrients. Zinc is an important adrenal nutrient. Vitamin yeah. C is an important adrenal nutrient. Vitamin B, especially. I know I hear I hear a lot of people say that if you have um, skin like acne or oily skin or something like that, that you actually have a zinc deficiency a lot of times. I, zinc deficiency will cause acne in it, almost in, in all laboratory animals. Uh -huh. Whenever they do tests on laboratory animals and they take zinc out of the diet, lesions start to appear. Really? Yes. Okay. So not necessarily specifically acne, but acne like lesions. Yeah. As a uh, pharmacist, as a skincare pharmacist, as a compounding pharmacist, I consider right. zinc to be the number one, almost like, a, I hate, it's not a cure, I don't want to say the word cure, because cure implies some kind of magical thing happening, right. but it's almost like a cure right. for dealing with acne, especially if you have a zinc deficiency. Really? Now there's other things that are involved, mm -hmm. but if you have a zinc deficiency, and you start taking zinc, your skin will improve almost right. within days. It's almost right. like a miracle. That's right. And you always want zinc picolinate uh -huh. or zinc monomethionine, not the cheapo kind of zinc, which is called zinc gluconate or zinc okay. sulfate. Yeah, we can talk about zinc later, but just suffice it to say that zinc is the single most important mineral you can ever take for your skin. Mm -hmm. And vitamin A is the single most important uh, uh, vitamin you can take for your skin. And between zinc and vitamin A, yep. you have your two most important acne or oily skin, right. uh, especially acne. Uh, nutritional supplements, right. vitamin A and zinc. Interesting. Yes. Okay, because a lot of people don't know about the whole zinc effect either. Fun. Yeah. Oh, my God. zinc is important for and you. I, and I and I always hear people say that they that there is so much zinc deficiency in our. It's system. the number one or number two. Magnesium and zinc are the number one right. and number two mineral or even nutrient deficiencies. deficiencies that we suffer from. And between the two, there are five hundred different chemical reactions that occur in the body. Mm -hmm. That means most of us are walking around with five hundred different systems working on not working our body less efficiently than they could be working. Right. Interesting. So, yeah. So, I guess if you have acne, zinc, zinc is... 50 milligrams a day is a yeah. go-to. There's, there's a lot of other nutrients. And I actually have a product called Blemish Repair Complex, which I don't know if you know about. We have a nutritional yeah. supplement. Oh, you told right. me about yes. that. Yeah. Blemish Repair Complex, which is, is features zinc, among other things. Okay. That's used, that it's, I, it's, for, a, it's a supplement. It's a supplement right. that you take. I need and to I, carry that. Yes. And I have I, another supplement as well that I'm coming out with for okay. connective tissue. Awesome. So, I need to carry those. Like... Now, <laughs> okay, so here's another good question. This is a question I get asked a lot, so we'll kind of see your take on this about dark circles under the eyes. Is Great. that an internal thing? Is that, it's Hello, in, it's, it's inter all internal. Okay, okay, it's so. All inter yeah. Dark circles under the eyes are not a skin problem. Okay. That you're seeing the circulation. The dark circles, the darkness mm -hmm. is the blood. It's like stuff, compart it's, it's uh, dirt in the blood. See, the blood, it's so fascinating. The Bible says the life of the body, it's, the life of the body is in the blood. Everything is about the blood. Mm -hmm. Now, even the cells, as important as those are, those are fed and sustained by this, the blood. Yeah. As we get older, the blood becomes stagnant. It becomes sluggish. As toxicity builds up in the blood, it doesn't move as effectively. You'll see little kids sometimes with the purpling under the eyes, right. the bangs under the eyes. Well, guess what? That is a, a digestive condition. That's a food allergy that you're looking at. Yeah, I heard that. Yes. Yeah. You're looking at immune factors, defensive factors, uh, and, and little particles of food that are floating around in the blood, and they're kind of globbing the blood up, so it kind of pools. And the bags are a sign that things are pooling, fluids are pooling inside the skin. It's not a skin uh -huh. problem. It's a circulatory problem. Right. You know, as, especially I know as women, as you get older, dark circles seem to because appear. Because your blood starts to stagnate. Uh -huh. And I guess you because you thin out under the eyes. And your skin. You're thinning out a little bit, maybe under the mm -hmm. eyes. The eyes, the skin under the eyes tends to be the thinnest in the body. So right. you can actually tell a lot about the body by looking at the skin underneath under your eyes. eyes because you can actually see the blood. Even even if you're healthy, you can yep. sort of see blood supply underneath under your... the, underneath the uh, underneath the skin under your eyes. Yeah. So when you have a condition, whether it's pooling of blood or whether it's looseness under the under the uh, a bagginess under the eyes, you're looking at a circulatory problem. Now, you can have, there is a loss of fat that mm -hmm. occurs As under the eye, older. or there's also accumulation sometimes of fat right. that occur, can right. occur. And that now, can, is that with puffy eyes? Is that No, the puffy eyes are okay. an allergic reaction also, okay. but there's sort of like, you can see fatty tissue okay. under the eyes. They'll have to do surgical procedures. Well, that, oh, to take out that to fat. take out some of that fat. Right. So as we get older, things kind of get mushy. You know, holding a body intact takes a lot of work mm -hmm. from a cellular perspective. That's why when you're young, 
if you look at the body closely, what we love about young people's bodies is that there's fine lines and there's crispness. Mm -hmm. and if you're an artist, you can see lines, kind of. Mm -hmm. As we get older, everything kind of just blob. We turn <laughs> into a kind of blobby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we mush up. Yeah. Exactly. That's what the aging process right. is. The fat starts to get all in wrong places, and yeah. we're not as, we don't have as clean. Our lines aren't as clean <laughs> right. anymore. Right. And that's really what the aging process is, and that's what you're seeing under the eyes when you see that the fat dark. deposition. Right. Now the fat the deposition. Fat. Now the dark circles are circulation, okay. and that's what you really want to understand because if you have a circul circulatory problem that's showing up under your eyes, guess what? You may have a kidney problem. Mm -hmm. You may have a heart problem. You may have a blood circulation problem through your body. You may be at higher risk for heart disease. You may already right. have heart disease. Right. So if you try to mask that or cover that up, that circulatory problem is happening right. under your eyes, again, you're not listening to your body talking, to mm -hmm. your skin talking to you. Mm -hmm. Your body is talking to you. It's telling you through your eyes that you have an issue going on with your circulatory system. Okay. And that's, that's the leading cause of death. Right. The circulatory problems in this country. Hundreds right. of thousands of people a year die from circulatory problems every year. So this is not to be trifled with. Uh, circles under the eyes, and you don't want to treat circles under the eyes as a cosmetic issue. You want it's to treat more it as an internal, it's issue internal again. health issue right. again, especially with children. Yeah, because if a child has, I remember children are supposed to be they're supposed to have those right. clean lines. They're supposed to be in the prime of their life. If a child is has, has darkness, darkness or puffiness or bagginess, especially if he also gets ear infections or nose infections or constant right. runny noses or has bowel problems or digestive problems, you. Absolutely want to be doing a food diary and looking at right. your food stuff, so your kids' diet. Right. Yes. Like it's, a food allergy or something. Classic. And you know why? Because dairy is so allergenic. Right. And we another bad idea that we have in our culture is that we're all supposed to be drinking milk. Mm -hmm. you know, and and as it turns out, none of us should be drinking milk. Right. Although I will say that if you get milk right from the cow and it's raw milk, there's probably some nutritional value in it. But it's a problematic food the way most of us are ingesting it, right. and it's best avoided. Right. Especially if you already if you're exhibiting the signs of an allergy. Right. Milk is milk is a likely suspect. Dairy right. in general is a likely right. suspect. Interesting. How did so you feel after you? Oh my god, I felt like a whole new person with cutting out dairy. Is <laughs> cutting out dairy, I was like... Is that amazing? I am, yes. Like, it was, I what would it take so for you to have a glass of milk? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. 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 A nice glass I'll of milk. I'll never get tempted yeah. by dairy ever again. Even ice cream? <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh -uh. I've had ice cream in like 20 years. Yeah. I can't it like honestly makes me th sick to think of. Because like your body yeah. feels so good without yes. it. Yes. Yeah. You want to put that thing in there? Exactly. Like it's, but oh. the thing is, if you didn't quit for a little bit, you wouldn't know. You don't know. Exactly. It's so shocking. Most beneficial food for skin health if you could pick one top food for skin health what would it be <laughs> <laughs> wow that's a good one there's a few good ones all of, i can't do just one but like, eggs eggs are beneficial if you don't have an egg allergy yeah the nutritional value of eggs a lot of people have problems with eggs right so you have to be careful there but as far as the perfect food you know why the egg is the perfect food no, not just for why? your skin but for everything else why because an egg is not an egg we call it an egg but an egg is just the first part of what an egg really is. It's the first word. An egg is an egg cell. An egg is a cell. Mm -hmm. And so when you eat an egg, you're eating a cell. Mm -hmm. And a cell contains everything you need for the cells. Mm -hmm. It is a cell. So right. it contains everything you need to make a cell. And when we talk about skin health, we're not talking about skin health. We're talking about skin cell health. Right. So when you eat an egg, you're eating everything you need to make a cell. An egg is literally a cell. So an yeah. egg is the ultimate perfect food for cells, which means it's the ultimate perfect food for us. Right. Because we're composed of cells. So for your skin or for any other system, an egg is the, the perfect food. Uh, but it is because it does have such a, uh, its own protein content and proteins, certain, uh, certain kinds of proteins can stimulate the immune system. A lot of people have immune problems with eggs, digestive problems right. with eggs, they'll break out with eggs. So you gotta be careful. Right. Aside from that, uh, yeast, is another really good food because a yeast, again, is not a yeast. It's a right. yeast cell. Okay. And so yeast contain everything. It's a nutritional yeast. Uh, I just bought some of that, actually. Nutritional yeast. Because I kept I keep reading about how to supplement with that. And how um, it has popcorn. everything you need to make a cell. Yeah. Has, uh, it is a cell. Right. So you're eating a cell. Okay. Another power... I call these power foods. Mm -hmm. right? Another power food is oysters. Oyster... This is all stuff I don't eat. <laughs> Do you not like them or no. you just don't eat them? I don't, I don't seafood. Well, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Seafood is pretty See, powerful. It is, yeah. Because yeah, we are... Our internal milieu is the ocean. Uh -huh. We have the same internal biochemistry, like or internal nutritional chemistry or mineral chemistry, actually, as the ocean has. Mm -hmm. So, in a way, when we eat seafood, we're kind of like coming back to where we came from. Mm -hmm. all, our bodies developed in the ocean. Okay, interesting. The, the mineral con the mineral content of our fluids matches the mineral content of the uh, of ocean fluids. Okay. So, ocean foods are very important and okay. very helpful. Um, oysters and uh, another, some other good ones here. 
Uh, olives are good, although they're not in the same category as the other ones. Mm-hmm. Of the three foods, sardines are good. Uh, they're not in the, uh, sardines, although if you don't like fish, you yeah, don't have a problem. Sardines. Yeah. Uh, let me think of what else here. Algae. Uh-huh. Algae. Oh packed. yeah. Do you like algae? Well, I take um, oh, chlorella tablets. Chlorella type. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Right. But, but things like uh, seaweed also, mm-hmm. not just algae. Okay, right. Seaweed. Yep. Power, so seaweed's a power food. Yep. So good. So delicious. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll finish up with this one because this is one that I get asked about a lot, a lot. Okay, and I, we kind of talked about this a little bit last night. Okay, let's talk about skincare in like jar okay. form. Yes. This is a question that so many people, I'm, you, I'm sure you know. You can tell the instability of a product from two ways. Don't worry about the instability of a product based on your theories or based on your concepts or based on your read yep. or, or based on what you read. You tell the instability product most especially by what it looks like. If the product is brown, flush it down. Right. If the product right. is deteriorated or degraded, that's you're, gonna a degrade, you're gonna see it, you're gonna notice it. Secondly, how does the product work? If the product works on your skin, it's active, it's doing something. And I know with these products, because I've been, I've been out now for four or five years, and I know I've been using them myself for 35 years, there's no degradation, even if you put them, left them out in a jar, in a clear right. jar. Right. But I do keep them in a dark jar. I have had my retinol, uh, I, just for testing in my lab, I've had it out for years yeah. in clear jars, and it doesn't, right. it doesn't deteriorate. So now, is that the case with um, any skincare out there? Say you go to Nordstrom, you pick up a skincare in a jar, is that going to... It's unlikely that it will deteriorate because, like I say, you can see if it's going to okay, deteriorate. Right. And companies well, people and then people say that oh, well, the oxygen's touching and then no. you're it, it's no. unstable you're now not, and it's no. Okay. I mean, even if you left it, I make sure that it, you could leave it with the top open and nothing happens. Right. But, but nobody's ever going to leave it with the top mm-hmm. open. The second or two that you have it out, it's not going to. No, because you know if, if that were true, every time you put it on your skin, it would be oxidized because right. it's on your skin. Right. So obviously, it has to be able to withstand a certain amount of oxygen, otherwise, it couldn't work on your skin. Right. Perfect. Well, I think that wraps up. Up our question and answer here. I think we're going to do one more video, talk a little bit more into the okay. nutrition aspect yes. of things. So we're going to film that next, but that wraps it up for this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>